Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science. The human body has an amazing ability to sense the world around you. In this video, I'd like to talk about five key senses that you use every day. In this video, I will review smell, vision, touch, balance, and your ability to hear. Let's get started. In this video, I'd like to talk about your sense of smell. Throughout the day, you are exposed to many different types of smell. Think of coffee or maybe a flower. But how does your brain sense these different smell? Your sense of smell originates in your nose. When you breathe in, odorants from these different objects travel into your nasal cavity and reach the olfactory epithelium. The olfactory epithelium contains mucus which traps these odorants and this activates receptors found in the olfactory epithelium. We have around 450 different types of these receptors and each one can detect a slightly different smell. Once an odor molecule binds to a receptor it initiates an electrical signal that travels from the sensory neurons to the olfactory bulb, which is a structure at the base of the forebrain that relays the signal to the brain. This smell information also goes to the thalamus, a structure that serves as a relay station for much of the sensory information coming into the brain. The thalamus transmit, transmits some of this smell information to the hippocampus, which is a key brain region involved in learning and memory. This explains why some smells bring back vivid memories whenever you encounter them. So there we go. You have the nose, the brain, and smell that helps you sense the world around this video, I'd like to talk about your vision. Your eyes allow you to see the world around you. In fact, your eyes allow you to watch this video. But how do your eyes transfer the light energy into impulses that your brain can interpret. In this video I'd like to go over those steps. When rays of light first strike your eyes they pass through a structure known as the cornea. It is a clear tissue and covers the front of the eyes. As light passes through the cornea it passes through a fluid filled chamber and then reaches the pupil. The pupil is an opening through which light enters the eye. You may have noticed that in bright light the pupil is small and in dark light your pupil is large. The iris is a circular structure that surrounds the pupil and regulates the amount of light entering the eye. Your iris also gives the eye its color. As light passes through the pupil it next will strike the lens, which is a structure that focuses light. Because of the way in which the lens of the eyes bends the light, the image it produces is upside down and reverse. Also, muscles that are attached to the lens adjust its shape, which allows the light to be clear and in focus. After passing through the lens, the focus light passes through a jelly-like fluid and reaches the back of the light of the eye into onto a surface called the retina. The retina is filled with tiny receptors which are called rods and cones. There are over 130 million receptor cells. There are two types of receptors, rods and cones. Rods work best in dim light and enable you to see black and white. Cones on the other hand work better in bright light and enable you to see colors. There are three types of cones red, green, and blue and this allows you to see the colors around you. After the light strikes the rods and cones nerve impulses travel down the optic nerve to the occipital lobe of your brain. At the occipital lobe, excuse me, at the occipital lobe of your brain, 
the reversed image is turned right side up and it also combines the images from each eye. There we go, that's how your eye interprets light and transfers it to your brain, touch. which allows you. We have an amazing sense of touch. It allows us to sense hot, cold, textures, and pain. Your sense of touch is found in all areas of your skin. It is controlled by a huge network of nerve endings and touch receptors in the skin known as the somatosensory system. This system is responsible for all the sensations we feel. Hot, cold, smooth, pressure, tickle, pain, and many more. Your skin is composed of three layers. The epidermis, which is the outside layer, the dermis, which contains many hair follicles and nerve endings, and the subcutaneous layer, which is composed of fat. In this video, I will focus on three types of receptors in our skin that send signals to the neurons, which sends a signal to the brain, which interprets the information. First up are mechanoreceptors. These receptors perceive sensations such as pressure, vibrations, and texture. They are located in the dermis. One example of these receptors would be sensing the texture of an object. Thermoreceptors are receptors that perceive sensations related to temperature of objects that the skin feels. They are also found in the dermis of the skin and there are two basic categories of thermoreceptors, hot and cold. Pain receptors detect pain or stimuli that can cause damage to the skin and other tissues of the body. There are over 3 million pain receptors throughout the body found in the skin, muscle, bones, and even some organs. Armed with these receptors in our skin, we have an amazing ability to sense the world sense of balance. Take a look at these three examples of your sense of balance. where your sense of balance originates? It is a combination of your brain nervous system and your inner ear. Inside the inner ear are the semicircular canals, which are structures in the ear that are responsible for your sense of balance. These canals, as well as two little tiny sacs located behind them, are filled with fluid, and they also are lined with tiny hair-like structures. When your head moves, the fluid in the semicircular canals is set in motion. The moving fluid makes the cells hair-like extensions bend. This bending produces nerve impulses in the sensory neurons and then these impulses travel, travel to your cerebrum. At the cerebellum, then analyzes the impulses to determine the way your head is moving. If you look at the bones, the posterior semicircular bone measures when your head tilts from your ear towards your shoulder. Your anterior part of this controls up and down like you're saying yes, and your lateral control the side to side movement. With these three different bones or semicircular canals, and nerve impulses going to your brain, your brain can determine your location and also can stimulate muscles to help keep your sense of balance. So there you go, your sense of balance controlled in your inner ear with that strange looking creature called the semicircular. Every day we are surrounded by lots of different sounds and our ears help us hear these. The ear can be divided into three parts, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer part of the ear is shaped like a funnel and it's called the pinna. This shape enables the outer ear to gather sound. The sound waves then travel 
down into the ear canal. At the end of the ear canal, sound waves reach the eardrum. The eardrum separates the outer ear from the middle ear. This membrane vibrates when the sound waves strike it. It then vibrates in the same way that the surface of a drum may vibrate when it is struck. The vibrations from the eardrum pass to the middle ear which contains three small bones. The malleus which is called the hammer, the incus which is sometimes called the anvil, and the stirrup which is called the stapes. The hammer passes the vibration to the anvil and the anvil passes this to the stirrup. The stirrup vibrates against a thin membrane that covers the opening to the inner ear. The membrane channels the vibration into the fluid of the cochlea. It is a snail-shaped tube that is lined with receptors that respond to the sound. When the flu fluid in the cochlea vibrates, it stimulates receptors. Sensory neurons then send nerve impulses to the cerebrum through the auditory nerves. And then these impulses are interpreted as sounds that you hear. The ear also is important for balance and it has what are called semicircular canals that help you regulate your balance. But I'll cover that in another video. So there we go. We have the ear. It has three parts and three tiny bones, but it allows you to hear. Thanks for watching and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.